Howdy doody everyone, Wambu here, and today it's finally time to talk about a franchise that I've neglected for far too long. That's right, after almost two years, I'm finally spotlighting the Pink Marshmallow Kirby. Not only is the Kirby franchise one of my favorite Nintendo franchises, but its titular character is one of my favorite characters ever. So what better way to show my love than by exploring my favorites from his expansive collection of copy abilities. Now, in terms of the rules, I'm gonna be looking at these abilities mainly in their default Kirby forms. That means no Robobot forms or super abilities. I also won't be including endgame abilities, nor will I be including the mixed abilities from Kirby 64. I'll make that list another day. Hopefully I've made myself as clear as crystal shards, cause it's time to to begin. There are quite a lot of copy abilities that are basically situational novelties. Think abilities like high jump or laser. Abilities that can certainly be useful, but typically work best when the level is designed around them. Ordinarily, these kind of abilities wouldn't really leave a great impression on me due to the limited use. There was one that still stood out though. Starting things off real basic with this one. The wheel ability, obviously enough, turns Kirby into a jet plane, where he can use his jet plane fists to punch all of his enemies to death. Now you dummy, it turns him into a wheel, obviously. In wheel form, you press the button, and that dang heckin' Kirby do a zoom. It's really complicated, okay? There's a very high skill ceiling with this one. In all seriousness, though, this one's just addicting as hell. While zooming along, Kirby can only be damaged when he's turning. While you've got the momentum, though, you're indestructible. Just avoid pits, and your road-killing rampage should go swimmingly. Later games have also added some little bells and whistles such as boosting, jumping, boost jumping, and in the case of Squeak Squad, the ability to take on properties from the trio of elements. There's also the wheelie partner in Superstar, which Kirby can actually board, and I'll be honest, I don't entirely know what the point of it is, but it's cool anyway. Wheel isn't the most practical ability, like I said before, the stage does still need to be built around it somewhat. You could also be a dumbass like me and try to use it wherever though, and I dare you to just try and fight any boss or mini boss with out looking like a fucking idiot. But when the circumstances are just right, there's nothing quite like breezing through levels with this thing while flattening everyone in your path. Bugs are fucking scary. Imagine that, a chandelier that's afraid of bugs. I'm a disgrace. To be fair though, I'm not terrified of them or anything. I just get a sense of discomfort when I'm in the same room as them. But as the beetle ability proves, it could always be a lot worse. At the very least, I've never had a real life bug or insect skewer me, pile drive me, and then skewer me again. Though that might be kind of awesome. Though it'd also be pretty painful. Yeah, bugs are fine as is. Beetle is a brute. Possibly the most brutal brute of all copy abilities. With that big ass horn, Kirby can slice dudes in a flurry similar to that of Sword, but more notably, he can jam these little bastards onto the spike, carry them around, and throw them in a number of ways. Kind to like suplex and backdrop. Then there's also its ability to hover, which is pretty much taken from Jet. Keep in mind, I'm not really praising this ability for its originality. But in spite of the fact that it pretty much nicks almost all of its moves from other abilities, it still manages to keep to the whole bug motif really well. That and it's a damn good combination of abilities. Not only is it a really combat efficient ability, but it's also really practical. Its horn can cut ropes and grass while its hard head slam attack can also punch down stakes. Now combat wise, there are still some abilities that I find more satisfying, and unfortunately for Beetle, it's only been in one game, and it wasn't even that common in said game. But if it ever came back in later games, who knows? It might just grow on me even further. Let me get one thing out of the way. I loved Planet Robobot, but I don't think it had a great selection of new abilities. I mean, I guess none of them were all that bad, but I don't know. Poison is really good for taking out bosses, but it's a bit of a chore to use on normal enemies, and none of its attacks really seem to hit with any real impact. I like ESP a lot better, but even then, there's not all that much to it. That leaves us with Doctor. Probably the most niche of the three, possibly the least practical of the three, and easily the dumbest of the three. So basically, I adore it.
As it turns out, Nintendo characters make for shitty doctors. And if you think Kirby is the exception to that, then I know just the guy to examine your head for you. Nintendo's definition of a doctor is apparently pills, pills, and more pills. They're not for ingesting, they're for throwing at people you don't like. To be fair though, they do more damage than you might think. Pills aren't the only thing Kirby's got hidden in his coat. If you want to do more, you could smack someone with a giant clipboard or spray them with rainbows. Best of all though is the science lab move, which sees Kirby mix a bunch of random chemicals together, you know, as any responsible doctor would. After a little while, he produces one of four different concoctions. The first three are elemental attacks that vary in height and spread, while the fourth one is a health potion. If this still doesn't sound all too practical, it's because it's not. I say fuck practicality. Just be an idiot. Isn't that what being a doctor is all about? Probably not, because I have no clue what I'm talking about, but I don't need to. Now, overall, I love this ability for its silliness and overall charm, but I'd be happy as a clam if this ability could be pushed further. Give more concoctions or give the pills a bunch of goofy side effects. There's so many ways to move forward with this one. You guys can keep your Meta Knights and King Dededes. Me personally, I've always been a Bandana D guy. Spear is just an absolutely solid ability. Like most melee weapons in the game, it's got pretty damn good power, but Spear manages to stand out because good god the reach on this thing. So long as enemies are on the same side of the universe as you, they're getting a stabbing. And with the ability to throw his spears, it means that Kirby's also got a pretty solid projectile working for him. It means that what we've got here is an ability that's not just great for combat, but also for solving puzzles, but my favorite part of this ability is that they laced it with a secret ingredient known as I don't give a fuck. If throwing three spears the size of your own body seems legit to you, then how about throwing spear after spear after spear over and over again? I'm sorry, is there a wall in your way? It doesn't matter, you've got a spear, it's not a problem. Or how about this, have you ever found yourself in need of a makeshift helicopter- wait, what? That's fucking bullshit. I love it. And we didn't vote this guy into Smash 4. Humanity, you should be ashamed of yourself. And now, on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, we have a powerful long-range melee weapon with the ability to phase through walls. That's not what opposite means. Well, fuck me. As we look towards the future and ponder about what new ground Kirby could break or what old ground he could revitalize, I think it's important for us to remember that at one time, Kirby weaponized a toy from the 60s that we all loved in the 90s. And fittingly enough, the ability based on a toy is just pure style and fun. You've got a bunch of sweeping yo-yo strikes with titanically huge hitboxes, and it would be one thing if Kirby just flailed the yo-yo around, but the fact that he combines it with a bunch of breakdancing moves just makes it so much better. And all all the more charming. Add the ability to grab enemies as the cherry on top, and yeah, Yo-Yo is just an absolute blast. It's so much fun that for a while, I didn't even notice that it was directly referencing Ness from Earthbound. And spoiler alert, this isn't going to be the only ability on this list that takes inspiration from other characters. I pretty much love everything about this ability, but of course, we only got it in Superstar, and it's Remake. If we got Beetle back, that'd be awesome. But nothing would make me happier than seeing Yo-Yo again. We got Jet and Mirror back in Planet Robobot. It could happen. Let a man dream. 18 years. It took us 18 years to get a copy ability based around the iconic element of water. I mean, we've certainly been close for a while. Okay, ice, that's in the right ballpark. Bubble, okay, okay, we're getting closer. Water, yes, that one, that's the one. Everything is right with the world. Just another reason why I love Return to Dreamland so much. Given most representations of hydrokinesis, I'm sure plenty of people would be expecting a fairly elegant power. No. 
Have you guys been to an ocean before? Approach an oncoming wave the wrong way and it'll beat the shit out of you, wash you up on shore, and occasionally steal your clothes. That's more like what we've got here. Water is a diverse ability, but a surprisingly potent one all the same. You've got a fairly solid projectile, a geyser for hitting enemies way above you, the ability to surf around on land and on the surface of water, a powerful wave move which gives us some lovely invincibility frames, rainbows, and for those underwater segments that would normally kill all my joy, an enhanced version of the water gun attack. But because I am a dumb guy that enjoys dumb things that are dumb, like me, my favorite move is the fountain hover. This is beauty, and I don't care what anyone else says about it. Yeah, no, don't mind me, you guys. I'll just be up here chilling. But really, water is just such an immediately comfortable and fun ability that makes so much sense for the franchise that it really does feel like an instant classic. So, of course, it was the only new ability from Return to Dreamland that didn't get brought back in Triple Deluxe or Planet Robobot. How Laboratories was just like, we took too long to make water, huh? Well, fine, I guess you guys don't want it anymore. Oh, you do want it? Well, here you go. Oh, whoops. That's the poison! Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today in loving memory of Wombu's hopes and dreams. What a baby. Moving on. You know what? If there's one way in which Kirby has really progressed over the many games, it's this. He's become a way better sharpshooter. Remember when Kirby had arrows that were entirely weak sauce and not completely busted? Archer is insanely good, possibly too good. The fully charged arrows from this thing are not only insanely strong, but they can be fired in whatever direction with limitless reach. This alongside a surrounding attack, a midair attack, and a melee ability would already be a recipe for a great ability on its own, but it's the power to camouflage that puts Archer way over the edge. Kirby may look like a goof, but this is no laughing matter. While he's stationary in this state, Kirby is completely invulnerable to damage, of any kind. He straight up can't be hurt. He's even immune to attacks coming towards the screen, which makes no sense at all, but hey, I don't make the rules. Now, to be fair, Leaf did this first. However, with that ability, you couldn't walk around in camouflage, nor could you attack. But guess what you can do with Archer? As you can tell, I'm a man that likes my video games to be difficult. Joking aside, though, while it makes me feel like a bit of a scrub, I love this ability. As its original name, Sniper, would imply, it was designed to kill. And it kills good. This is where things got really tough to narrow down. I basically considered this top three to be the trifecta of just amazing abilities that I constantly have fun with and always want to return to no matter what game I see them in. And really ranking them like this just feels wrong, but it needs to be done. So as much as I hate doing this, And speaking of copy abilities that totally cheese bosses, I've never been all too big on King Dedede, but to give him credit, his signature weapon is a great one. And yet, looking at it for the first time, it's just so basic. You wouldn't really expect it to be as good as it is. Oh look, I've got a hammer. Well, I guess if I encounter any nails, I'll show him a thing or two. Oh. Oh, I understand now. Hammer may not be as much of an easy win as something like Archer, but if you're looking for damage output, this thing has got it. Most of its attacks, both in midair and on the ground, have more power than your average attack with other abilities, but then there's Hammer Flip, which is just in a whole other league. The perfect move for a rousing game of smash your head off golf. But if unmatched combat prowess isn't enough for you, Hammer is a pretty nifty problem solver too, mostly thanks to its ability to punch down stakes and break more durable blocks. Locks. That and the hammer swing move actually has fire properties. Seriously, that move is way too fucking good. Now, typically, hammer isn't exactly a common ability. You can only find it through a copy essence or the bonkers mini boss, but honestly, that's a pretty fair counterbalance. My main issue with hammer is that the modern games haven't really done any huge favors for it. I'd say it probably reached its peak in Squeak Squad, where the hammer could become excessively large, but in the most recent games, the charge has been removed altogether. Then again, though, maybe it was for the best. 
Alternatively though, there's the sort of hard hitter that leans less on the raw power side and more on mobility and versatility. And when that red headband comes on, that's when it's time to unleash Dumback Drop. If this list has revealed one thing about me, it's that I enjoy me a light dose of what the hell is going on. But when I want to make things simple, and just open a can of whoop-ass on Dreamland, Fighter is the ability that I'll always be busting out. Sometimes it's refreshing to just give a good old fashioned beat down. Kick, punch, it's all in the mind, and this ability takes the kick punching to fantastic heights. I just love how this ability feels. Each attack hits with force, but more than that, they combo so gracefully into one another. It's a perfect blend of speed and power, keeping combat fun and all kinds of satisfying. Add throwing moves into the mix and now I just feel spoiled. Really, I could summarize this by saying that this is basically Ryu the power-up. You've got your Hadoukens, your Shoryukens, and your Tatsumaki Senpukyakus. It's not that hard to pronounce, you guys. But really, I think they translated Ryu's fighting style over to Kirby really well. I've never been big on Street Fighter, but I know that this could have been way more complicated. Instead, while there's still a bit of a skill ceiling, it's pretty easy to get behind. Wait, hold on. Apparently, the references to Street Fighter are not 100% confirmed. Okay, scratch all that. The Force Blast, Rising Break, and Spin Kick are all definitely original ideas from HAL Laboratories. Absolutely no references here. Shut up. That's that. Do not steal you're a- be a fucking thief, but- <laughs> But in all seriousness, the only issue I have with Fighter is that it's not really able to solve most puzzles in the game. But for its abilities in combat, it was so close to topping this list. But before we get into what beat it out, here's some honorable mentions and guilty pleasures. Bye. Pretty great ability, albeit a little bare bones for my taste. This is fun and charming, but I really wish it had even more to show. This ability is just the absolute worst piece of shit ability ever, but I kinda love it. Really creative idea that I really wish was better. Adorable and fun, but ultimately a tad gimmicky. Probably my favorite of the three main elements, though none of them made the list proper. Generally fun and surprisingly useful. I don't know why, but I really like fighting bosses with this ability. It's pretty solid anywhere else, though. A lot of people seemed pretty happy by Mirror coming back in Planet Robobot, but I was actually a lot happier about Jet. This one was pretty damn close to making the list, by the way. This might just be my favorite ability in Squeak Squad, and yet I'm kinda indifferent to it in every other game. Funny how that works. And now, number one. Throughout this list, I've shown a love of abilities with satisfying power, combo ability, versatility, affinity with the three elements, a hint of dumb charm, and a possible homage to other characters. With all that said, what iconic copy ability that encompasses all these things has felt strangely absent from the list up until this point? This one really snuck up on me, because I've never really thought of Sword as a favorite of mine. It was the ability I never realized I was always coming back to, but being made to think about it now? Yeah. Everything about this ability works for me. Like I said, it's got everything. The powerful sword strikes that cover multiple angles, the combos, the speed, the range, the practicality with puzzles, matched with all the little bells and whistles that come with this ability, like the sword beam, the sky energy sword, and Squeak Squad's elemental variants, and sword becomes so much more than just a good all-arounder. In fact, there's something I haven't praised an ability for yet. I love the way sword evolves throughout the games. I mean, yeah, they've been laying the Legend of Zelda references thicker and thicker, but they've all made for very welcome additions to the ability. Hey, maybe Kirby should just stop being original and just rip off a bunch of other characters, am I right? Actually, nah, that'd kinda suck. But really, I can't say I've seen an ability as experimental as this one. It's always been a perfectly fun ability, but seeing how it changed throughout the games really shows how they've really polished this one to absolute perfection. Throw in the fact that it's always been one of the more common abilities throughout the games, and I genuinely have no clue if I could really say anything bad about it. Again, it's never been one I thought of as a favorite, at least not not until now, but in a weird way, I also can't say I've consistently enjoyed another ability more. It's the boringly perfect ability that's only gotten better and better. <laughs> 